All right, so this 15 minute ankle routine will be exploring all the different elements of ankle function, including strength, mobility, and obviously we'll have some balance and play in there as well. And you'll need your soul mate. If you don't have a soul mate, you can do most of the exercises with a rolled up towel, but we also do have a full tutorial on foot and ankle exercises and integrating the two that has that uses no equipment so feel free to go and check that out as well for this routine it'll also be helpful to have a dowel or to be set up next to a wall okay we're going to set up our soulmate on the ground like so and we're going to get started with some calf raises so this is where the dowel or a wall really helps just for balance because we're not working on balance just yet, mostly the mobility and the strength aspect. So with the calf raises, you're setting up with the ball of your foot on the soulmate, toes are wrapping over the edge, and then you're just slowly raising up as far as you can onto your tiptoes and then slowly lowering down until your heels just touch the ground and then going up. Now, if this is too much pressure on the balls of your feet, you can fold up a towel or a tea towel or anything just to cushion between your feet and the soulmate. Over time, you will build up the resilience in the balls of your feet, but feel free to use that in the meantime if this does feel like too much pressure. And we're aiming for 60 seconds straight with these calf raises but you can break up your 60 seconds however you like. Might be 10 seconds on, five seconds off, whatever works for you and depending on what your strength is like. And then once you've done the 60 seconds, however you've broken it up, you can go onto tibialis raises. So lifting up like that. So your heels are on the soulmate obviously and your toes are lifting up. Again, just using something for balance. We really just want to focus on getting as much lift there. And this is working on those muscles that are called the tibialis anterior, hence the name, tib raises. And if you want a little bit of a variation here, then you can go into some eversion as you go down by planting the big toe first, rather than just flattening or like lowering it flat. You can lower it towards the big toe lift back up and lower it towards the pinky toe. So that will just get a few more muscles activating and is a nice challenge. So again, same thing, break up the 60 seconds however you like. Once you have done 60 seconds, then you can go into some inversion and eversion. Work will start with inversion. So soulmate together like that and you're actually setting up the line of your big toe along the top of the soulmate. And then you're just allowing your pinky toes to rest towards the ground and even touch the ground so that you're getting a little bit of an inversion stretch. And then you can lift back up. So not necessarily holding the stretch, it's just moving in and out of that inversion position. You will feel a stretch down the outside of your leg. Most people will, unless you're very hypermobile. If that's the case for you, it's fine just to work through this. Don't, you don't necessarily have to seek that stretch feeling. If you're using that full range like so, keep at it. Otherwise, if you're not getting that full range, that's fine as well. You might just find that you're getting to that kind of range before, you're, you feel, before you feel that stretch and then you just come back out of that over time, you can increase the range. Now for our eversion stretch, you just bring those two apart like that and now you're actually putting the line of your pinky toe along the top of the soulmate. And then you are allowing your big toes to drop down towards the ground like that and then lifting back up. Big toes in. Try and, try and find a stretch. It won't be as obvious as the inversion position and you may not even feel a really obvious muscular stretch, but just work on 
getting the range in. You can even sort of knock your knees a little bit together like that if you have that range. But again, if you're only getting to about here and back up, then that's completely fine. So same thing, 60 seconds for each of those. If you'd like to fill it out a bit more, you can do two rounds of the calf raises, tib raises, and inversion, eversion. All right, moving on to balance. We're gonna have our soulmate set up in beam mode like so, and we're gonna start with some ninja walks. So this is just where we are set up in ninja stance. Now, you can use a dowel or a wall for balance um, at first if this is particularly difficult for you. I'm gonna demonstrate without, because that is obviously what you're aiming for and you're just doing little walks like this across the soulmate. And back. So going for 60 seconds total. As always, split that 60 seconds up however you need. And obviously, for most people, especially once you take away the balance assistance, then you'll be stepping off, stepping back on, resetting, and so on. So once you've done your 60, you can move on to heel ninja holds. So this is where, very similar to the tib raises, we're just raising up our toes off the ground, but now you're trying to balance there, okay? So if you are using a wall, which most people will need to at first, this is particularly, a particularly challenging stance. So if you are using a wall, I'd highly recommend just setting it up in front of you or next to you, and you're just tapping as you need to. So you use as little assistance as you can. And obviously if you step off, it's completely fine, but ideally just try and hold the position and tap using your hand to find that balance. And of course, overall, or eventually you wanna build up to 60 seconds without using the assistance. Maybe not straight, as you can see, I didn't do it, um, but working for 60 seconds total for, uh, without the assistance. Next up, you can go just to a ninja stance hold. So this is same thing, but same thing as the ninja walk, but you're obviously just holding it static like that. And with all of these balance activities, it's gonna be harder to look straight ahead. It'll be even harder, obviously, to look up or left and right. But as you're tuning in the balance, it's best just to look straight ahead. It's the easiest place to look is gonna be about a 45 degree angle down at the ground. But go between that and up. Don't look at your feet and you're building up to 60 seconds in ninja stance in one go without any errors is a good place to aim for. Um, but of course, stepping off, stepping back on, or using a wall for assistance is completely fine too. Next up, we've got big toe stance. <clears throat> so that is lining the big toe up on the middle of the soulmate, and then you're trying to keep this part of your foot off. And we're gonna work one side for 30 seconds and the other side for 30 seconds for a total of a minute, obviously. And if the single leg stance version is too hard, you can change the soulmate configuration to be a split stance like that, where you've still got the other leg down, but you're loading most of your weight onto the front. <clears throat> Okay, and then you do the other side. That, I'll just demo that. The other side for 30 seconds. Again, if you're stepping off, that's fine. And I'll demo what that looks like in single leg, just so you know that it's possible. The other thing you can do with any of these stances, if you want to increase the challenge, is take your arms away. Obviously, if you want a really big challenge, you could close your eyes. 
but I'd recommend doing the no hands first. Last stance is pinky stance. So the line of your pinky toe is lined up on the top of the soulmate now, and you're trying to keep the rest of this off the soulmate. So we're just building with both of these pinky, pinky toe stance and big toe stance, we're building the stability and the control through the inversion and eversion. 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other side. Again, you could go no arms, you could go no eyes. If you want a lot of challenge, step off, step back on as much as you need to. And that is your balance section. All right, now we're gonna get a bit more playful. If you do have a hacky sack, now's a good time to get it out. Otherwise, a balled up pair of socks will be fine for this. And you might find that a balled up pair of socks is an even better place for you to start because we will be gripping this with our toes and we're doing a forward reach. So grip the hacky or socks with your toes and place it as far forward as you can. Stand back up and then reach to grab it again. So if you need to use a wall for balance, that's fine. But ideally build up to not using the wall. And just if you make, make an error, that's fine. Just get back on, start again. And you can see my ankle is going through this large range of dorsiflexion while everything is having to stabilize and control through that range of motion. So you might wanna go 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other. Now, if you're not getting the range that you're seeing me do, that's completely fine. It might be just this little range or it might be even less. At first, just meet your body where it's at and over time, try and build up the range. You may wanna have a little indicator of how far you're going. The other thing to note is just try and keep your heel down. So not, not lifting the heel up to get further because we're obviously wanting to work on our ankle mobility here. So 30 on one side, 30 on the other. And then just to give that movement pattern a break, we can go into some ninja reaches. So that was forward reaches. Now we're getting ninja reaches, which is standing in ninja stance, obviously. We're reaching as far forward as we can, like so. And then reaching as far back as we can, which is gonna take your center of gravity forward to counteract that reach. And obviously is gonna place some more stress on the knees and the quads. So you're just playing with that pattern. Not really a right or wrong, just reaching as far forward as you can while maintaining stable and as far back as you can. So that might just look like this. If that's as far as you can go, that's fine. Over time, you build up the range and it might look like this going backwards. That's fine too. Over time, you can build further and further in both directions. And obviously, if you're making some errors along the way, completely fine. Just reset, get back on. And if you really have to for this one, you can use a dowel or a wall and then you just reach with one hand forward and one hand back. But that's really if you, you know, not even lasting one or two seconds in the stance, then you can use the wall. Otherwise, if you're getting a good five seconds and you're having an error, just keep working on that. It's gonna be the best way to improve your balance over time is to not use the assistance. But if you need to, use the assistance as much as you like. Now, 
set a timer for five minutes and go between those two exercises, spending about a minute on each one. Um, go between, play for five minutes, and yeah, try and get into the zone, have fun with it, and enjoy.